Well, I mean, glaring massive hole. How surprised it's going to be the quarterback position. Haven't had one since luck in 2018. We've kind of been a revolving door there as well as a pit stop and nursing home. And uh, it's gotten to be a little bit of a burden for me as a fan, as you can see. That how oh, excuse me. That helmet back there is a signed Andrew Luck helmet. That is my guy. That's my favorite Colt outside of Peyton Manning. And, uh, you know, we did him a disservice and couldn't keep him healthy. So we have to bring someone into the fold and we have to develop them. And uh, with the number four overall pick, obviously, at that point, whether or not we trade up with Chicago, trade up with Houston, it makes no difference. I know that our pick is going to be a quarterback. So whether that is Stroud, whether that's Levis, Bryce Young, whatever is available. I am deliberately leaving Anthony Richardson out of that equation, and I will get into why a little bit later in our next segment. I just, just trust me. I have stuff in the tank for that one. The Colts definitely need to work on finding a way to just mitigating all of the issues that we have, which is mainly on the offensive side, side and that starts with the quarterback. Second for me is going to be weapons. We have Jonathan Taylor, Jelani Wood, a couple of solid younger tight ends as well. We need some receivers outside of Michael Pittman Jr. We don't necessarily have anybody out there. I mean, I know we drafted Alec Pierce last year. I know that Ashlyn Doolin has stepped up in a different role. I know we've had some undrafted free agents kind of come in and play decently. But we do not have a big playmaker. We do not have someone that's going to go out there and go get a touchdown. Someone that you can throw the ball up to and they can come down with it. Yes, Michael Pittman is 6'3". Yes, he's got an incredible vertical. Yes, he's very physical. Outside of Michael Pittman, we don't have anybody legitimate. And if we're being honest, Michael Pittman on most other teams would be a number two or three receiver. He's not a definitive number one. So we're going to need to build that wide receiver core. We've had to do that for years, and I'm tired of the plugs. I'm tired of the temporary band-aids. We need a definitive wide receiver core. Because without that, our young quarterback is going to have no targets to throw to because our wide receivers can't create separation. So for me, the biggest two glaring issues on the offensive side of the ball Got to have a quarterback, and you got to deepen and strengthen the wide receiver room. And for me, I really only have one more point to go over, and that would be the offensive line because, Kev, how many times when you looked at that offensive line, they were getting just absolutely destroyed on the line of scrimmage? Every, it looked like every play, honestly. Yes, they stepped up in, in some instances, like maybe in a game or two swing, but for the majority of the season, whoever was at the quarterback position – was getting beat up every single game. And that's really the part that I want to focus on is with the offensive line. Kev, I'm not even sure that they really need like wholesale changes where they need to completely flip this offensive line. I just think that the, the intensity needs to be rampant up because, Kev, even Quentin Nelson, who was a multiple-time Pro Bowler as an offensive guard, was getting destroyed. And it had an impact on the offense. There's no doubt about that. Because Jonathan Taylor, not this past season, but the season before, was one of the best running backs in the NFL statistically. And granted, you know, there have been some injuries that he's dealt with along the way. But you could just tell that the productivity in the running game was not as prevalent as it was the year before. And if Indy wants to be a consistent offense, they had to be able to run the ball effectively. But... It all starts up in the trenches. And if they're not winning those one-on-one -on -one battles or winning those double-team blocks to get up to the second level, the team's going to be stagnant offensively. Now, obviously, when you look at the offense, the biggest thing is going to be who are they going to draft for a quarterback. And they have a very good opportunity to, to draft some high quarterback prospects this year. And if that offensive line is not sharp and is not focused and ready to go, Whoever they draft, it's going to be difficult for them to get comfortable in the NFL. And we could look back to the past of what Andrew Luck had to deal with when his offensive line was in check. You could basically say at this point that his career was cut short based on the fact that the Colts weren't able to build up an effective offensive line to protect their quarterback. You know, Is that a situation that the Colts want to round back to again with whatever quarterback they draft this NFL draft, hopefully not. Hopefully they've learned from their mistakes.